What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about Kazuha, a character with some of the lowest sales in Genshin history, who also just so happens to be one of the most highly sought after characters at the moment. It wasn't always the case though, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at why Kazuha flopped initially, why players want him now, why he's good, and if he'll still be good moving forward into Sumeru. As always, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to let me know down in the comments below, and consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost to 100k, we just hit 90k, and I'm super excited to get there, and I know we can do it before the summer's over. With that being said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Kazuha. The first time Kazuha ran was over a year ago in version 1.6. This was the first summer event in Genshin, similarly to how he's running again during the summer patch of 2.8, but barely anybody pulled for him at all. Don't get me wrong, tons of players have Kazuha, but compared to other banner sales at the time, Kazuha had the lowest sales up to that point, even comparable to Albedo's first run. This is kinda weird, considering he's a 5-star animo unit. There was basically no way for him to be bad, since Swirl is strong and Viridus and Venerer is a broken artifact set that makes essentially all content easier. So why would that flop, even with the brand new Swirl buffs at the time? Well, there's a few reasons. One of the bigger ones was that even though Swirl did get buffed, many theory crafters and standard players hadn't had a chance to completely realize the potential of the swirl buffs. Yes, we knew swirl was stronger, but it's hard to rate how comfortable a character is within the meta and Spiral Abyss in such a short time. And on top of that, Sucrose and Venti already existed, and Kazuha was being compared to Sucrose constantly. Sucrose is better for some teams than Kazuha, but most of that implies that you're a highly skilled player constantly min-maxing your teams. It doesn't really account for the average player looking to clear content, who doesn't pay attention to who's holding Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers or swirling the right element all the time. Nonetheless, Kazuha was called just 5-star Sucrose, and since Genshin was not even a year old still, not every character had their full potential recognized by the community. At the time, just 5-star Sucrose meant you shouldn't pull for Kazuha if you have Sucrose. But there's another reason for Kazuha's flop as well. Knowing that Inazuma would come out in the patch after Kazuha's banner, and with Ayaka, Yomiya, and Raiden leaks coming out, many players wanted to save for the coming new units. After all, Ayaka was one of the most highly anticipated releases of the entire game. Ayaka simps are strong and dedicated. There were even free-to-play players who saved from day one to C6 the Primordial Waifu. Tons of players were hyped about the coming Inazuma units, so when people said Kazuha is just a 5-star Sucrose, that also came across as you don't really need him as much as you'll want the newer characters in Inazuma. Now, that's not to say that nobody understood Kazuha's potential, but when information that isn't the whole truth is spread by most content creators and eventually reaches as word of mouth, that can create issues for banner sales. I mean, just look at Yaimiko. Content creators aren't responsible for all banner sales, obviously, but it definitely didn't help that everyone was frustrated with her. With all of those things in mind, many players opted to skip out on Kazuha, since in their eyes, and according to many content creators and even plenty of theory crafters, he was nothing special, and not as worth it as waiting for new Inazuma units. But that mindset changed within a single patch of him being gone. So why did players shift towards wanting Kazuha? The TLDR is that he's fun, rewarding, and very strong, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. When players say 5-star Sucrose, that shouldn't be taken lightly. Sucrose is one of the strongest units in the entire game, and by giving a character similar to her faster grouping utility, a mid-air dodge, elemental mastery scaling, and a huge elemental damage buff, you're creating a unit that's really powerful. Myself and many others would argue that Kazuha is even the strongest 5-star unit in the game at the moment. Supports are underrated by the average player. A good support lineup can carry your DPS, whatever they may be. To put simply what Kazuha does that makes him such a great support, he has an elemental skill with two levels of charge that can swirl, pull enemies towards him, and lift him in the air. You have three utilities in that one skill alone. You have a grouping utility, a viridescent venera resistance shred, and a jump that can dodge enemy attacks. And I'll talk about this more in my Kazuha guide, but don't undersell his jump. It's actually super easy to dodge attacks with, and in general, just a helpful tool. On top of that, Kazuha's Burst is a wide area swirl utility that deals damage of the type it's infused with, as well as swirls elements onto enemies. With his passives, you get even more value out of it too. His 
Burst gives Resistance Shred with Viridus and Venerer, high damage over time, and buffs damage of the element that you swirled. He can also swirl multiple elements right when you cast his Burst, since you can infuse his Burst with whatever element Kazuha has on himself, but also hit a swirl on an enemy with a different aura, which allows him to debuff multiple enemies at the same time. His best build is Elemental Mastery Focused, because that deals more damage than crit with multiple elements and also buffs your team's damage. Swirl is just stronger, but in a worst case scenario, he's actually still alright with a crit build. Diversity of stats and diversity of teams makes him incredibly flexible. Not only is his personal damage pretty dang high, but he's also buffing the rest of your team. And as a result, he's one of the strongest universal supports, and with his shorter cooldowns, he revolutionized team building within Genshin. Because of how strong he and Bennett are, you can take almost any elemental damage dealer in the game, put them on a team with Kazuha and Bennett together, and you'll be able to clear Spiral Abyss floor 12 with time left over. He's an incredibly powerful unit, and in most showcases you see for elemental teams that aren't Geo, you'll see Kazuha there to enhance people's damage. With him being super easy and very fun to play, he's one of the most sought after characters in the entire game now. And Hoyuverse likely knew that, which is why they never brought him back during some of his story quests. Him being released right before Sumeru is likely an effort to get everyone to dump primos before the new characters come out and before a top up reset during the game's second anniversary. And I know plenty of players are going to be getting our short Animo King, because with Hoyuverse constantly trying to counter Venti by making huge enemies and having Kazuha with huge area coverage on his burst makes him easier to use, more flexible, and a highly desired unit. One of the single best things about Kazuha is his free-to-play friendliness. Plenty of people will tell you you need his signature weapon, but that's just not true at all. In fact, I don't recommend getting a signature weapon in general unless you have tons of money to blow. Because even though Freedom Sworn is good, Kazuha is fully functional and powerful at C0 with free-to-play accessible weapons. First off, Iron Sting isn't actually a weapon I recommend as the number one four-star for him. Yes, it gives elemental mastery, and theoretically it is best in slot for damage for free-to-play, but because you want to have his burst up 100% of the time, you're going to need a tad bit of energy recharge in content where you're not defeating a ton of enemies at once. I wouldn't say he has energy problems, because he doesn't, but the convenience of energy recharge weapons on Kazuha is awesome. Primarily, I'm talking about the Favonius Sword, which not only has an energy recharge main stat, but also generates particles that you can use to battery Kazuha or another character on your team. The extra particles it makes is equal to a ton of substats worth of rolls, so it's worth considering on on him to make him super comfy to play. Alternatively though, Sacrificial Sword can also work. Trading 5-10% to of your damage for comfort is worth it in both my opinion and also the opinion of the Kaching Mains Theorycrafting Network, and I'd highly recommend it, especially if you're a more casual player that doesn't pay attention to rotations. If you want to know more about Favonius weapons, check out my video on them linked below, or wait until my official Kazuha guide comes out. Notice how the weapons I listed though are all 4 stars. Favonius is best in my opinion, but if you're a free-to-play player who doesn't have that, you can always use the craftable Iron Sting instead for bonus elemental mastery, which means you'll be able to guarantee as a free-to-play player that you'll have a good weapon for him. On top of that, because he fits into literally almost every single team comp in the game, he works with most units, even for newer players without a diverse roster to choose from. Kazuha is one of the more free-to-play friendly units in the game, and free-to-play players can't go wrong picking him up. He's definitely very good for those who don't want to spend on the game. Tons of players are wondering if Kazuha is still worth pulling with Sumeru and Dendro coming out. And the skepticism is pretty understandable, because Hoyuverse sort of does this thing where they take older units and make new enemies to counter them directly, or just change how Spiral Abyss operates. For example, Venti is a ridiculously strong unit in general, but he used to be game-breaking, because enemies would be grouped up and annihilated in Abyss within seconds. And to counter that, Hoyuverse filled Abyss with heavy enemies and bosses that just can't be lifted into his burst, which made Venti significantly less useful than before. Still a good unit, but definitely indirectly nerfed. The same thing happened with Zhongli afterwards too, because everyone was using his shield to not try very hard and difficult content, so Hoyuverse added a corrosion mechanic to force players to use healers. After that, they sold Kokomi, so it's understandable that players would worry about Raiden or Kazuha being less good with the release of Sumeru. But there's one thing that you should take comfort in with Kazuha, and that's how hard to break he is. Realistically, there's only three ways that Hoyuverse 
Viridus could nerf Kazuha. The first is by making enemies with such high resistances that Viridus and Venera doesn't matter. If they did this, this would likely use true damage as a mechanic in order to defeat the enemies instead, since true damage is damage that is exactly what it says and unaffected by resistances. For example, 400 true damage does 400 damage regardless of the enemy's HP, regardless of the enemy's resistances, it's always 400. But if they did add true damage as a required mechanic, there would need to be a lot of characters that can use it, and that would be pretty difficult to implement, so that's not very likely. Alternatively, they could just increase resistances to elements that could be swirled and then make it so Dendro, Geo, and Physical are good, but I just don't think that's very likely. Another way they could nerf Kazuha is by making characters take damage when they swirl enemies. All in all, this isn't something that I think is off the table for Hoyoverse, since they have done similar things with Overload and Superconduct in Domains, but you can just heal through things like that usually, so I don't see it being much of an issue. The last way they could nerf Kazuha is by abusing the Hydro cooldown increase mechanic, where it forces you to use characters' normal and charged attacks because their skills and bursts are on extra long cooldowns. That may be a gimmick eventually, but I don't really see that happening until Fontaine, and by then there will be plenty of characters who you can use to cleanse that aura anyways. We already have a few like Bennett and Jean for example. All in all, though it's not impossible to nerf Kazuha, it seems pretty dang unlikely. Reducing his grouping doesn't do much, since his burst has a huge range, and Virtus and Venner is just so strong that it's hard to replace. On top of that, even if Dendro doesn't react with Animo, there's still going to be plenty of non-Dendro characters you'll be playing in Sumeru, since Dendro reacts with other elements. With Kazuha being able to buff your elemental damage dealers as well, he's very unlikely to fall out of the meta even with a new patch incoming. Because the only way they could possibly nerf Kazuha for real would be if they nerfed Animo as a whole, and if they did that, they couldn't sell you Animo units either. Kazuha is just universally good, and even with new Sumeru units coming, I wouldn't recommend skipping him. There are so many characters in the game now that you may not see Kazuha again for a while, so I'd highly recommend getting him if you're interested. That being said, I'll likely have a Kazuha vs Yomiya video out pretty soon, and if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe down below. Thanks for watching everyone, make sure to check out my Twitch if you want to see some testing and live content, and I'll catch you next time.